Hi there everybody. In today's video I have this uh, Mini Koopa. This is a 2009. Um, I'm going to be changing the front brake pads in it. Um, so to start I'm going to open the brake fluid reservoir. Um, just open the cup and leave it open. Um, that reservoir is actually under this cover here. If you just move this little plastic bit towards the front, you can open this, and that's where the reservoir is. Um, so I'm just gonna open it and leave it open. Also, um, just looking at the quantities here, because uh, we're gonna be pushing the, the pistons um, back to fit the new parts um, and when we fit the pistons the fluid comes back up so I just don't want it to be overflowing here basically because uh, sometimes people tend to top this up um, as it goes down but, um, but usually this goes down as the pads wear down if it was going down for another reason, then, then uh, we would have a, um, some kind of leak somewhere. Um, but if somebody tops it up while the pistons are wearing down, then when you push it, when we push the pistons back, the fluid will come up and maybe overflow here. And uh, the problem with that is that it's a bit corrosive. So if it goes onto the onto the metal frame, it, it causes corrosion. So um, if you think it's a little bit, yours is a bit full or something, um, I would just recommend putting a little bit of paper around there. Just in case, and that will at least uh, absorb that liquid if if some overflows. Because the car is going to be up. In my case, the car is going to be up, and I won't be able to see it. Um, if you're doing it on the street, on the road, or your driveway, um, you'll probably jack the car up, and you may have a better visibility of that. So, with that said, I am going to get the car up, and uh, we can remove the wheels so get your locking wheel nut ready to get those wheels out okay so our brake pads will be in here um, but one of these sides um, usually has a sensor, so I think the other side is the one with the sensor. So I think I'm going to do the other side with the sensor, um, just to cover that part as well. Um, but otherwise, this will be the same process as the other side, but a bit easier without the sensor. So I'll concentrate on the other side, on the other wheel. Okay, so working on this side, you can see that the, um, the sensor is here. That's the cable there. Um, for that, you're gonna need a sensor, which is, in this case, the part number is TRW um, GIC247 uh, for MINI. Um, you're also gonna need, obviously, your brake pads. The ones I'm using are these, Juratech. Uh, 1758 is the part number or uh, what is it JCP 1974 but obviously just uh, if you're gonna buy this or uh, similar give give the registration number to your supplier and they'll get some for you um, I'm also gonna use a little bit of copper washer and I'm gonna need a 13 mil socket with a wrench I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver quite a um, fairly long one and a wire 
wire brush um, just to brush off some of the dust and some brake fluid cleaner um, and also I'm using a pair of pliers so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be opening this little bolt here that's a 13 mil and I'm just gonna hold the inside here with these pliers because this tends to rotate a little bit uh, while you open that so um, I'm gonna start doing that now Hopefully that illuminates a little bit. So we're gonna concentrate on that bit first. So that is just a 13 mil. Just gonna hold that bit, loosen that and just hold it in a bit your kit should come with two new bolts because you're gonna need one for this end and another one for the other side so this is the sensor here just gonna open this little rubber cup here release that. This sensor, you can just pull it out. We're not gonna be reusing it, so. All right, we're just gonna pull it with the uh, There we are, okay. Um, I'm also gonna use this uh, screwdriver to push the piston back. So while leaving the pads in there, um, I'm just wedging this in there a little bit to get, to push the piston back. So I'm just using So I can put it in, in there basically against the disc and then pull this back and that basically is just pushing that piston back. And that's almost the whole piston gone in. So I'm just going to lift this up a little bit, but mind, um, mind this brake fluid uh, pipe up here, so I'm not going to lift it all the way up. I'm only going to lift it a little bit here and get this pads out. And then I'm also going to remove this little metal clumps here. So there's one at the bottom and then there's another one at the top. They just pop out really. They might be a little bit stuck because of the, the time they've been in there, but it shouldn't be 
too bad really So those are the ones and the reason I'm taking them out is just to give them a, a brush so if you have a wire brush something like this just give them a brush clean them, I mean, you can clean them as much as you you want really, it's mainly to clean in, inside of this bit, the, the pad slides during its life while you operate the, the bricks. So I just want that bit to be clean, so uh, we have an even wear of the pads. Obviously, other things influence the wear, but but so does this. So if we can uh, make sure these are really clean, then we don't have any issues. Also, just clean this area a little bit. And the wear a mask if you can, because this creates um, dust. So definitely wear a mask. Uh, also, I usually uh, just give the sides of the caliper inside here a little a little brush and just a metal bit of the of the piston nothing too tragic just a little bit and then uh, I'm just gonna clean it with the brake fluid cleaner here yeah? Try to clean it a little bit here. So this is the little clamp uh, that goes down there where the pads slide. I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease on these bits. That's just on the bits where the pads slide. Brake fluid cleaner uh, dries very quickly, so I can put that back on there. And just press them down. And do the same for the top one. Just give it a brush. Same idea, just a bit of copper um, grease there, and now I'm gonna fit this back.
Right, if, if while you're putting the little clamps you get a bit of um, copper grease on your disc, um, you can just turn the disc and just wipe it off, obviously. I saw I got a little bit on, on this end, so um, just wipe it up. Now uh, you can get your pads. That's the pad where the, this is the side where the sensor goes in. The new sensor will go in there. So these bits go on, on the little rail parts of those clamps that we just cleaned. Okay, they should just uh, slide in fairly easily. So this is the other side. Um, so again, I just like to put a little bit of copper grease um, on the bits that sit on the pad. Again, nothing too tragic, just to avoid any sticking, um, although the pads these days come with that material there. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of that copper grease on the um, metal surface of the of the piston, which is just in there. So. If you find that uh, this won't go back in because the piston is not all the way in, you could always um, get one of these wrenches and just push the piston back in that extra little bit that it needs. There are some bigger uh, wrenches that you can use as well. So those pistons sometimes are a little bit hard to push in, but these ones were okay. But we can use one of these if that piston... Okay, so that went in a little bit more. That just allows us to get that nicely in there. Shouldn't really be a struggle they are uh, quite easy to go in there it's just as long as the piston is um, nicely back now I've got my new bolt Fit that in there. Okay, so just holding that bit there, and now we can tighten that. And uh, we're pretty much done, so the last bit that we need to do here is the, is that cable. So that cable that cable goes round to just behind this 
cover here so I'm just gonna take this little uh, plastic pin out sometimes you need to uh, push them out while you unscrew it so otherwise they don't seem to come out So, just going to remove a few of these uh, plastic screws. Okay, so I had to change my uh, recording because of the um, the sound. Um, I had to cut out the sound, but basically the idea is that, um, if you manage to to get this cover out a little bit from underneath, um, you will see the white connector up there. Um, that white connector um, it's basically the sensor for the pads so you wanna remove it and unplug it you just need to press on the sides of that little plug and take it out and then you just need to really uh, follow the cable and remove all the bits where it's um, it's hold on to so it's just hold on to the other um, cable that is running down there it's just it's just uh, mounted on uh, by this little mounts that the cable has itself on it um, so just go ahead and follow that cable um, just remove it from from the other one and that last one there um, it's a little bit hard to, to take out but you can just um, if you get some pliers you can actually pull it you just need to pull on the the little side of that rubber that is is um, plugged into a pin. It's plugged into a little pin and it's holding the cable quite tightly together. So it needs to be um, needs to be removed uh, basically.
So at this point I'm uh, basically just um, refitting the new sensor so I plugged it in to the connector and then just following it following it around and mounting it on the other cable just like the old one was um, that little last um, mounting bit there is, is a little bit it's a bit hard to put in so I, I used a bit of um, I used some pliers for that in the end to pull it and was able to get that around so at this point I just got um, a pair of pliers one to hold on to the little pin and the other one to to pull the little um, lip that goes on it so I can pull it nicely and get it on properly so it doesn't come out um, I think it's a little bit hard to do by hand but with the two pliers I was able to to fit it nicely um, and the next uh, stage I'm just putting the cable around that um, where the uh, bleeding point is for the pads I'm just gonna close that little rubber um, the image has gone a little bit dark there but that's all I'm doing I'm just uh, closing the I'm just gonna be closing the um, the little bleeding um, nut there and with that on we can then push the sensor push the sensor into the pad um, it can be a little bit hard to push the sensor in um, so sometimes it feels like you've pushed it in but it it doesn't go in all the way so it, it's a bit hard just be careful as well sometimes they do snap if you bend it a little bit um, so I put a bit of pressure there but even then it's not in it needs to go in a bit more so now it's gone in properly um, I'm just having a a double check that everything is in place properly um, and that's and that's it really now we can uh, refit the wheel and then um, we are pretty much done um, don't forget to put those little um, plastic screws on that hold on that to that cover and then we're gonna go um, up to the top of the car and close um, the reservoir after checking it okay so with the car down now we can check the reservoir now you may be able to notice that uh, that fluid is gone right up on this particular one so it that fluid is a little bit too much now um, I'm going to press the brake so to see how much it goes down because there will be a little bit um, that the pistons need to go in after we change the pads so before driving the car or anything always make sure you press the brakes first until they get nice and hard now you may be able to notice that the fluid is gone down a bit um, but it's still a bit high in this situation 
so I'm gonna need to take a little bit of that fluid out um, to have it on the max and that's pretty much it so I hope this video helps and thanks for watching